ನಮೋಟಸಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹಟೋ ಸಂಬೋಧಸ ನಮೋಟಸಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹಟೋ ಸಂಬೋಧಸ ನಮೋಟಸಗವತೋ ಗುಡ್ ಇವಿನ್ ಬಿ ವೈನ್ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ಟುಡೆ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದ ಲೆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೀಲ ಮೊರಾಲಿಟಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಸಿ ಸೊ ಲೆಸ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆರ್ ಉಪ ಸೆಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಟುಡೆ ಅವ ಕಂಕ್ಲೂಡ್ according to uposatha sota from engotra nikaya <coughs> poris concept of uposatha in other word fumo and numundi is not just observing sila it is also to purify your mind as well by means of meditation right so by practicing recollection or tripajim like that so we can purify our mind so that will be the purpose of uh, uposatha day so the main purpose of observing uposatha is to close to to live close to hosandit so in this uposatha day you can do tanasila bhavana right so that will be the purpose of uposatha normally people cannot lead pure life every day because they are they are walking right so they have to do a lot of thing in order to purify the fibers in their mind so they choose specialties so in this way uh, observing precept listening to the dhamma dhamma talk practicing meditation on upasana days so up perform to accumulate more good deed so in that way we you close you live close to hosandit so that is the meaning of upasata it is important to take note that doing good deed only on upasata day is not enough so you have to do good deed every day right so you have to cleanse you have to find mind that me hosan action should be done at all time so that is a, the purpose of posata <coughs> normally people normally can sunday right to take precept and uh to do meditation or now every thursday every saturday you come and attend the class that is uposatha <laughs> even though sunday is not for my new monday if you cleanse your mind your dirty mind we can call it uposatha right uposatha day <coughs> uposatha day now you come and attend the class uh, at least one and a half hour your mind is yeah purified right your mind is pure right pure you don't have loba to some moha so at this particular moment you observing uposatha uposatha so that will be the purpose of uposatha one thing another thing is uh, normally when you are observing sila you will repeat after the mank right potan sarana gachami when a man say potan sarana gachami people repeat after the mank potan sarana gachami normally most people think that only after repeating the man you observe precept it is not so it's not so repeating after the man it me you keep precept so today i will take five precept it is just a kind of keeping promise you know you keep promise in front of the in front of the man so therefore uh we can give example law for uh, if you want to go somewhere you take a etiquette right etiquette so repeating after the mank 
or chanting after the man, it, it is not a keeping precept. You just keep promise. Today I will, I promise in front of you that I will keep five precepts. I will keep a precept, right? It is just like a buy an air ticket. If you do not take the flight, so you will not get to desired destination, right? Suppose you want to go to Bali, you bought air ticket. Buying air ticket is a kind of keeping promise that you will take precept. And taking flight to Bali, it is observing, you know, it is observing, actually observing sila. Then only you will get, you will get to Bali and you will get to design a destination. So sometimes, even though you do not repeat after the monk, you keep five precepts, or you keep a precept. Same, you know. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to keep precept to do good deed, right? As long as you are observing sila, and as long as you are doing good deed, that is uposeta, uposeta. Because many people actually think that only after they come to Tempe, take precept, then after uh, going back from monastery, they do whatever they want. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a keeping precept, right? It's not a keeping precept. It's just a keeping promise, right? It's one thing to take note. <clears throat> okay, so. Now I want to talk about another type of a precept, another type of a precept. We will call it uh, commentary a precept because uh, Wisori Maka mentioned that Wisori Maka is a commentary, not teachings of the Buddha, written by uh, uh, Venerable uh, Buddha Kosa and full century AD. Fourth century AD. So he suggests one type of uh, a precept. We will call it commentary a precept. But Usuri Maka call it Ajiotamaka Sila. Ajiotamaka Sila. Ajiotamaka Sila. That means Sila that has livelihood as the eight. So the last one is livelihood. Livelihood. So this is a uh, type of sila. Those who want to wear makeup, you can, you can take this precept. Those who want to eat dinner, you can take this precept. So I think if you look at this one, I think it's good for some people, many people, right? Who are walking, right? It is very similar to the virtue of purity or livelihood. Ajiva Parisori Sila for the monks, for the monks. So let's see what is Ajiva uh, Tamaka Sila. Sila that has livelihood as the eight. So number one, I undertake the precept to abstain from distress your life. Same, right? So you refrain from killing. Number two, you refrain from taking what is not given. Same, you know? Same as the five precepts up to, up to here. Number three, I undertake the precept to abstain from sexual misconduct. Same, you right? know? So similar to five precept. Not like a, a precept. You can enjoy normal life, right? Normal life. So, Number one to number three, similar to five precept. And number four, same thing. I undertake the precept. So here you can see that number one to number three is uh, you refrain from three kinds of uh, unwholesome bodily actions, right? Killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct. So you refrain from three type of unwholesome bodily actions. And the other four, refraining from, abstaining from uh, four kinds of unwholesome public actions, unwholesome public actions, telling a line, abstaining from slandering, 
abstaining from hot speech, abstaining from distracted speech. These are the four unwholesome father action, right? Father action. So up to now, one to seven. So you, if you are observing commentary a precept, uh, the last one, you can see the last one. I undertake the precept to abstain from wrong me sought livelihood. So you are not doing any unwholesome bodily and verbal action in your job, in your profession. Right? Number one to number seven is refraining from three unwholesome bodily action and four unwholesome verbal actions. So the last one, refraining from wrong means or livelihood. So altogether, commentary a precept. Of course, I say normal people may not be easy to observe all, huh? every day. But when you determine to observe a precept, on this particular day, you will not tell a lie. You, know? you will not use unpleasant speeches. You will not slander, etc. right? And you will not do any distracted speeches like a gossip, like a talking nonsense, like that, right? So, and also uh, be mindful that you refrain from wrong means of livelihood. So this is a very beautiful uh, precept, a precept. Those who want to observe uh, more than five precepts, you can do this one. Yeah? You can do this one. We call it commentary a precept. Okay, any question? Up to now? No question, okay. Then regarding with uh, Romy's on livelihood, I want to quote one soda. Normally, when we talk about round livelihood, uh, we can normally we can show this is a uh, unrighteous trait, five type of unrighteous trait. So that we normally show uh, as an example. One nature soda is often quoted as example of round means of livelihood for later activities. Then I will quote what the Buddha taught because. A lay follower should not engage. Here, yeah? should not engage. The word should not. Hmm? Should not engage in these five traits. Five traits. Should not engage. Number one, trading in weapons. You should not, you should not trade in weapons. Actually, nowadays, many countries, they are doing that, right? Doing that. Even many Buddhist countries. <laughs> The Buddha say, if you are a true Buddhist, you shouldn't do that. Huh? You shouldn't do that. Then number two, trading in living beings. Living being here me, uh, kind of human trafficking. You know? Human trafficking, you shouldn't do that. And trading in meat, you shouldn't trade in meat, like a killing, right? Like a killing. Then trading in intoxicants including lacquer, right, uh, alcohol, etc. Then trading in poisons, trading in poisons. You shouldn't trade any type of poison as well, right? So these are the five type of unrighteous traits that a Buddhist should not engage. So the Buddha suggests, if you are a true Buddhist, if you are a true Buddhist, so one of my students uh, SMS me that uh, I think she I think she SMS me that she went to have a um, uh, business regarding with alcohol alcohol. So she was uh, she went to get suggestion from me. Uh, I told her that the Buddha talk about five type of unrighteous traits. The Buddha used the word, should not, <laughs> as a true Buddhist, should not. Huh? The another one is, 
That is my the first ad advice. And second one is, if you willing to do that, you need to do more good deal <laughs> to compensate all these unwholesome one, right? Unwholesome one. So two, you know, two part. You know, the first one is it's up to you. You can you can decide. You should not engage such unwholesome or unrighteous trades. If you want to do that, you need to do good, more good deed. Just like a, uh, helping your, uh, helping your uh, workers, and also, and of course, doing many type, many type of good deed regarding with the business. Of course, it's not really easy, you know. Buddhists or no Buddhists, so they are engaging, right? They were not actually; they were not follow, uh, you know, uh, religious teachings or spiritual teachings. Normally, there are only a few people. They listen to reli uh, religious teachings, you no? Know? Any religions? Any religions? Of course, if you. Uh, there, there will be many people who engage in righteous trades and they become rich. Maybe trading, uh, how to say, narcotic drugs, etc., you know? Trading drugs. They became rich, right? But even recently, right? Some people from China, they have an unlawful business here. They were very rich, right? Oh, they have a Pine lot dollars and also expensive car, etc. You know they're living in, um, or to say, landed houses. Very rich, right? They can do so many things. And righteous trades, right? But I think they, in their mind, maybe so many fears, right? They may have so many fears, even before they are arrested. What is the purpose of life, right? The purpose of life is happiness. You are very rich. If you are living under a lot of stress, fears, anxiety, your life is meaningless, meaningless, right? Even you don't have much, if you are contented, then you will have happiness in your life, right? So therefore, we need to know the purpose of life. Okay. Um, I will go to another one, nine precept. Now let's talk about nine precept. Noengu Bosata Sila in Pali. According to Noengu Bosata Sota in Gautra Nikaya, chapter nine, Sota number 80, if we add one more factor, it's not a sila, actually. We will call it one more factor. Call metta chaita. Minor loving kindness. Into canonical a precept. It is called knowing uposatha. Uposatha observe, complete in nine factors. So that means we have a canonical a precept, right? Canonical a precept. So then we add one more factor. It's called metta chaita. So you live with a minor loving kindness the whole day, right? If you are observing nine precepts the whole day, no anger at all. <laughs> so you have to control your mind not to be angry, you know? You have to live minor loving kindness toward all living beings. It's very, very beautiful, you know, uh, precept. We call it nine precept. But even though we call it nine precept, so the last factor is not a, not a sila. It is under meditation, right? Metta bhavana. Developing metta, you know. Um, metta is added into bhavana. So therefore, so the last one is not a sila, but we still call it nine precept. We still call it nine precept. Okay, so thing that you need to know. 
So the last one is recited as follow. If you are observing nine precept, so the last one you have to observe, you have to recite in this way. I undertake to dwell with the mind, imbued with the loving kindness toward all sentient beings. All sentient beings, everyone, right? Everyone, even the one you don't like. No, you you must have a loving kindness, right? So it's very beautiful precept. Very beautiful precept. In Pali, we we we, we recite in this way: Mita sahakate na chita sa sapa pana bute su freta wa we have we have yami. So this is the last precept. You need to add into Kanonike uh, a precept, right? Kanonike a precept. So today we talk about commentary a precept. No? Commentary a precept. So Kanonike a precept, we already talked about it last week, right? Last week. If you observe, actually many people observe nine precept. So the whole day, so they will be living with their mind of loving kindness. Even somebody make you angry, you need to control, <laughs> right? You need to have more mindfulness, more mindfulness. So that means if you are angry, so that means you broke, you know, the last precept and the last factor, right? You, you have only not a precept, right? A precept. Okay, any question regarding with the nine precept or uh, five type of unrighteous traits? <clears throat> no question, right? Okay, then let's continue to talk about ten precept. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> ten precept. For novices, for novices as well as the uh, samaneri, we call it samaneri for women. A passing under twenty is not granted as a beku. Beku me fully ordained one, but they can ordain as a samanera. Samanera, we normally translate novice monk, novice monk. Literally, the sign of a monk, because we, we take care of them. They are like our sign, you know? Samanera literally means the sign of a monk. So they have to live under the construction of, uh, uh, instruction of a monk. So, of course, at the time of the Buddha, and everyone is allowed to become a bhikkhu, a fully ordained one. Fully ordained one. Uh, later, a young boy, uh, they ordained as a, as a monk. But night time, they feel very angry, hungry, you know. They are crying. I want to eat. <laughs> crying, you know. At night time, they uh, urinate, uh, urinate on their bed, urinate and also uh, defecate in their net, in, in their bed. So therefore, because of that, the Buddha laid down one with their rules, um, a passing under 20 is not allowed to become a fully ordained man. So that is the one with near rule, right? One with near rule. We can count, on to say, the duration of conception in the mother's womb. Normally, uh, 10 months, right? 10 months. Sometimes you can even count as in nine months, right? Suppose if we are counting 10 months uh, in the mother's womb, so maybe if you are 90, 90 years old, plus, uh, what is it, another two months, right? Another two or three months. Normally we do three months. Because sometimes uh, some people was born uh, in the nine months. So therefore, actually we do three months. 
90, when somebody become 90 years old plus three months, so they can ordain as a fully ordained monk. So that is a, a counting system. Okay, so now let's talk about 10 presets for novices, Samanita. So here, 10 preset me <clears throat> from the first to sixth precept are the same as canonical A precept. The canonical A precept and from the first to six, same, right? Killing, refraining from killing, refraining from uh, stealing, and uh, any type of sex sexual intercourse and refraining from uh, taking improper time and drinking alcohol, etc. And another one is the, um, uh, what is it? Eh? Not, not luxury, not luxury. I mean, I'm talking about uh, the first two six. Killing, stealing, uh, sexual intercourse, drinking, oh yeah, yeah, uh, telling a lie, telling a lie. The last one is uh, taking improper time, taking the full improper time. So number one to number six, similar to uh, canonical A precept, right? Canonical A precept. Seven precept in the canonical precept, A precept, will be divided into two, divided into two. And we will add one more precept. That is uh, obtaining from the use of gold and silver. So that means uh, in the canonical eight precept, and we will have uh, seven precept is divided into two, right? It became two precept. Later I will show you. And we will add another one abstaining from the use of gold and silver. If you are Samanita, you are not allowed to use gold and silver, including money. So, before I talk about uh, term precept for novices, I want to use, I want to explain a little bit about silver and money. But in, in the Pali Canon, it's talk about gold and silver, right? Chata Rupa, Reseta, go and save up. The word money is not mentioned, right? So therefore, for that, um, Winia Pitika uh, explained uh, the word silver. Go is clear. Go is go or jewelry, right? Jewelry. Siva uh, is more broadly defined as the including coins, made it of silver, and copper, and wood, and lace. Nowadays, paper, right? Paper. That me, silver here doesn't, not, not just me, just silver. It me everything. Um, so in that way, the expression go and silver signify Many, right? Many. Some people may do uh, many with the coins, right? The coin made it of silver, copper, wood. And nowadays we use paper, right? So that means many. Okay. So number seven, the temporary is actually. Earlier I said uh, the first two six similar to canonical precept, right? So seven, I undertake the precept to abstain from dancing, singing, instrumental music, and unsuitable shows. And number eight, I undertake the precept to abstain from adorning, purifying themselves, by wearing garlands and applying sins and unguents. So here, when we are talking about canonical a precept, number seven and number eight are together, right? But in the 
for the novices, divide into two. That's one thing to take note. As a lay person, if you are observing a precept, this number seven and number eight together, as a one precept. For Samaneda, divided into two, right? Divided into two. Then number nine, I undertake the precept to abstain from the use of high and luxurious bed. Same. Eh? Only the last one is different. I undertake the precept to abstain from accepting gold and silver, including money, you know, including money. So, so this is a, uh, uh, the precept, not only precept for Samanita, but also for monks and nuns, for monks and nuns, for every monastics, every monastics. So that is the important one. For that, I want to quote one soda from Sounda Nikaya that talk about go and seva. Mani Chulaka Soda. So in that soda, Mani Chulaka is a headman, one of the officer in Rajakaha. So one time, um, many people in the assembly, in the government assembly, they are talking about uh, goals and seba. So they, they said that monks and nuns, especially for monks, or the Sano Sakya, the Sano Kodama, and they are allowed to use go and seva. Go and seva. So Manichulaka taught to them, no, no, no. Go and seva, including money, is not allowed for monks and nuns. So he can, uh, he is able to convince those government officials, government officials. Then after that, he went to meet with the Buddha and talk about uh, things that he said to assembly. He went to get confirmation from the Buddha, whether he is telling the right telling the truth or not. And the Buddha said that, yes, you're right, you're right. The Buddha said that if go and siva, jata rupa resata, are allowable for anyone, any man. The five cause of sensual pleasures are allowable for, for him, for him. Because as a man, uh, one of the things we have to do is the main thing we have to do is we have to stay away from five causes of sensual pleasures. So therefore, we are not allowed to watch a movie, not allowed to listen to music, etc. right? So we have to stay away from the five causes of sensual pleasures. We cannot enjoy sensual pleasures, right? If go and save are allowed to use the monks and nuns, they can buy, right? They can buy easily, you know. If they have a money, they can buy anything, right? Anything. If they have gold in their mark, in their hand, they can exchange easily, right? So therefore, the Buddha said that, no. If gold and silver are allowable for them, and it me, it implies that monks and nuns can enjoy sensual pleasures. So that is no papasa renunciation. We call it papacha. Papacha is a renunciation. Monks and nuns have to renounce sensual pleasures, right? If go and seva are allowable, then it me it imply that they can enjoy sensual pleasures, right? So that's what the Buddha want to say. If the five causes of sensual pleasures are allowable for anyone you can definitely consider him or her to be one who does not have the character of an ascetic or a follower of Sakyan Sen. So he has Sakyan Sen, Sakya Bodhiya Mi, the son of the Buddha, the son of the Buddha. Because the Buddha is Sakyan, no? from Sakya Kin. So therefore, 
Mahayana, they always say Sakyamuni, right? Sakyamuni, the son of, uh, the man of Sakya. So it me, it the monks are enjoying sensual pleasures. They don't have the character or aesthetics. Uh, if follow, they are not follower of Sakyan Sen or Sakyamuni. Sakyamuni. <clears throat> so the first step, if the Buddha allow, uh, if uh, go and Siva allow a bit, so that means uh, monks, they can enjoy sensual pleasures. Number two, if they are enjoying sensual pleasures, then uh, they don't have the character of monastics, monastics, or they are not follower of Sakyamuni, right? Sakyamuni. Then the Buddha said that straw may be sought by kneading straw. Tempa may be sought by one kneading tempa. A workman uh, may be sought by one who needing workman. So you can you can seek something that you want. The Buddha said, but I do not say that there is any method by which go and Siva may be consented to or sought. So there will be no any other way, right? No any other way to, to accept go and Siva, including many, right? Including many. So when you look at the sodas, um, it is very obvious, you know, accepting Go and Seva, including many. But when you see the monks nowadays, right? Most of them are not following these rules, you know. <laughs> Most of them are not following, you know. That's a, how is it? Not very good, no? Not very good. Then here, when you look at the winning rule, there's the winning rules taught by laid down by the Buddha. Wherever monk should take go and Seva, or should get another to take it for him, should get another to take it for him, or should consent to its being kept in deposit for him. So many restrictions. Huh? So there is an offense of expiation involving forfeiture, right? Forfeiture. So that means somebody donate go and save our money, you cannot accept it. It's a breaking this winner rules. If you accept it, you are breaking this winner rule, plus you have to abandon it. You have to abandon this uh, go and save our money. And also you cannot test somebody, uh, you can keep it to this person. You cannot tell <laughs> here, right? You cannot tell that person. And another one is, then that devotee is so generous and willing to donate to you, to a monk. Then keep it in front of him. Bande, I want to donate to you only, to you. And do whatever you want. And they keep in front of you. You cannot take it. You cannot take it. So it's very obvious. But there is one linear rules. One linear rules. Um, the Buddha allowed accepting uh, go and seva or many. That is, suppose when the body came, Bandi, I want to offer one rope for you. I want to offer one rope for you. That I'm not free to bind the rope. Then I will give money to such a person, this person, and he will buy a rope for you. Then I can accept it. So that means the devotee must be very clever, you know, must be very clever. So the devotee tell the monks, I want to offer the rope, not money. If they say, Bandi, I want to offer one, uh, $100 to you, 
No, <laughs> not allowed to accept it. Only the devotee tell me, Bandi, I want to offer one robe for you. Then I keep money to that person. So he will offer to you. Then I can accept it. Right? If the devotee say, Bandi, Bandi, I want to offer 100 to you. No, cannot. Yeah, you know? So that me, uh, even somebody put money in front of you, cannot, right? Cannot. So therefore, um, those who are following this winner rules, um, I want to say fully, and they were not, they were very, they, had, uh, they were take care of the usage, the language that the body use, right? So therefore, in some time, uh, you will know that um, you have to fill out the form. And whatever donation you want to make, you have to make the donation. Suppose you want to offer the rope, you want to offer the uh, monastery bedding, or you want to offer for construction of the, the rope, etc. Then you write down. So, Bandi, I offer uh, 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 maybe 100 Singapore dollar to do uh, uh, to bind the rope. Then uh, the monks uh, are not allowed to accept the money directly. So the devotee have to, we call it kapiya. Kapiya. Kapiya means the one who who do uh, uh, properly for the monks, for the monks. So the kapiya can do for the monks. Suppose the body donated um, $1,000, $1,000, and the kapiya accepted. I cannot take kapiya, give it to me, no, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot, you know. Then I, I, I talked to him or her, I want to get the rope, right? I want to do something for my monasteries. Then that person have to, um, have to do it for me, do it for me. Then that person do not listen to you. You can, do, you can talk to him, I think three times, I forgot, you know, three times. You can, you can talk to him three times. I want, I want the rope, or I want, I want to use that donation for construction of the monastery, etc. I can talk to them. Then if stay refusing or do not care. <laughs> so I, I don't have any right to talk to him, you know. I can stand in front of him without saying anything, you know. I can stand. You know? I think about four or, sorry, I, I forgot the, the number of the time. I can stand in front of him without saying anything. If I say, let me break in the winner rules. Then if that person do not give anything, then you can inform the donor. Uh, devotee, you offer 100 Singapore dollar for buying the rope. So your purpose is not fulfilled. <laughs> that is the language you're using. Your purpose is not fulfilled. Then you can do, you know, as you wish. And the donor can, can take it from him. <laughs> so the man cannot do anything. So therefore, uh, the men or nuns who really follow these winner rules, so they will not accept. So any... Uh, gold or silver, and also including money. So as a devotee, you should know that. One day I want to offer a rope, the construction of monastery, etc. No? So uh, I will give this money to my copy, to this person, to this person. So you can, um, so if somebody say like that, I can I can, um, uh, I can tell that devotee, 
well, this is my copy that I can say. I cannot say you can give it to that uh, $10, uh, $100 to this party. No, I cannot say. This is my copy. I can say it like that. So they are very, so the, these uh, Winnie rules are very certain. If you want to know, you need one copy who is uh, trustworthy. So there are some occasion that copy ran away, you know. <laughs> they misuse a lot of money, you know. It happened a lot, it happened a lot. So of course, uh, such incident may happen, such incident may happen. Okay, so this is the Winnie rule. Uh, so the monks and Samanera and nuns, they, they are not allowed to uh, accept gold and silver, including money. So in one soda, the Buddha said that there are four to five months of a monastic spiritual passing. If you are a monk, if you are a Samanera, if you are a nun, these are the four to five months that you have to clean, uh, cleanse, all right? Number one is drinking liquor and wine. If a monastic is a drinking liquor or wine, not good. And you will lose appearance of a monk or monastic. Number two, indulging in sexual intercourse. So as a monk and samanera, so we have to refrain from any type of sexual activities. Number three, accepting go and seva, including money. So have to. Then number four, earning their living by wrong livelihood. Wrong livelihood. So earning their living by wrong livelihood me, uh, you, if you are seeking donation uh, in improper way, improper way. Suppose somebody is not invited, then you are asking something to, from that person. It is a earning your living by wrong livelihood. So therefore, uh, before we observe three months of rain retreat in, in this time bed, so comedy were appoint, especially two person. So normally within the three months, they normally, they, they normally come in as the monks, Bandi, what do you need? If you need something, just let me know. So they normally come in, talk to the monks, and we can ask whatever we need. Of course, we cannot ask very expensive one. <laughs> so we have to know the limit, right? We have to know the, the limit of the devotee and their uh, generosity. So normally, of course, normally monks, we are not asking so many things, just like a detergent, right? Detergent, detergent powder, like that. Only send something. So without, you know, uh, invitation, if monastics are asking, that is the earning their living by raw means or livelihood. So uh, these are the four defilements of ascetics or monastics. The Buddha talk. Okay, so any question? Okay, question. Uh, Bante, I have two questions. One is if the monk perform a service like chanting at the funeral, then after that the family will usually give a red packet. Can the monk accept? Cannot, cannot, cannot but accept. This is usually done, you know. Of course, it is a, normally, if we do uh, a ceremony in the temple, red packet is one important factor, right? <laughs> of course, if you are given to Kapiya, it is okay. Normally in Myanmar, they write down Nawakama. So, they always say, Bande, this is for, for your Noah Kama. Noah Kama, Noah me, ra, a new one, Kama me, thing that we can do. 
So as a monk, we have a new thing to do, like a, a buying the rope or buying a ticket, etc. right? They normally uh, write down, Bandi, this is for your Navakama. For your Navakama. That means uh, this, I want to say, this money or red packet is for your, uh, uh, that you can buy things that you need. But if the man accept it directly, breaking this winner rules. But then, I see a lot of... Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, it, it became, you know, I want to say, like a tradition, you know. Yeah. It became so, like a norm. It became like a norm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other question is, um, the money in the box, huh? you know, there's a box downstairs. Is that one also the kapia must go through, is it? Of course, yes. Kapia must manage that one. Even the box money, people... You're right, you're right, you're right. Suppose um, you meet the donation box here, right? Donation box. Yeah, yeah, of course. We, as a man, we better not to interfere, right? But if the committee say, Bandi, we have this amount of money, what we should do, no? then we can suggest, we can suggest. Thank you, Bhante. Because money involves a lot of, you know, a lot of complexity, right? Because of money, then, uh, so we, therefore it's very important to take care of the money, you know, handling the money. Okay, any question? Question. Uh, Panti, do you do we give a certain amount? Uh, I know that some temples, they will tell us how much they need for them to be invited to services, funeral services. Um, and they also specify that this is because they need transport. Yeah, and other uh, things, offerings. Because when they do chanting, they will need other offerings as well. So therefore. Uh, it's part of the uh, part of the protocol to have a certain angpao given to the temple. Mm. So, so this is to cover not your pay, uh, not a allowance, but it's just for the daily, for the the usual transport offerings and so on. So perhaps uh, we we need to be very clear whether how money when we offered. Is it, what is it being used for? La? You're right, you're right, yeah. Because otherwise mm. people will misunderstood. Uh, oh, now the sanghas are now accepting money for the devotees, which is not true. Mm, it's yeah. just as a form of transport because when the devotees, I'm sure when you go for your, fun for your funeral uh, blessings, do you call that funeral blessings? Uh, can, can, yeah. Can. So usually mm. we will follow you as well so mm. that we could also we will also share the merits with the departed ones. Yeah. yeah. Of course, it's a quite common. It became a common practice in Bodhazin. So people who like to offer a red packet to the monks and the monks also accept it. But there are also many monks. They do not handle the money. They do not accept. There's so many, so many. Especially in the Thailand forest tradition. In Myanmar also, so many, uh, like a part of meditation center, they are not accepting, and they use kapiya. They use kapiya. And also, um, I think it's, it's not, honestly, it's not easy to not to accept, you know. It's not really easy, you know, to manage without handling the money by ourselves, you know. Of course, if we can, can be done, can be done. Uh, so here also, actually in Singapore, uh, people are not free, right? There's no kapiya. People cannot follow, you know? Then without using money, you will have a lot of difficulty. Of course, if we really follow what the Buddha taught, the best, the best way is not to accept any money. If you want to handle the money, use kapiya. 
or comedy, comedy. So that would be the best way. Okay, Gwen. Thank you, Wendy. So I have a follow-up question from the sisters. Um, so am I correct to say, in order not to make the monks break the precept, we shouldn't offer the red pocket to begin with, right? So we. But, so but here is our. Uh, you shouldn't offer to the man directly. Mm. And you can, if you are offering red packet, Bandy, I want, I want to offer for your requisites, mm. for your requisites, mm. uh, thing that you want to buy, and tell me who I should give it to. Oh, so that so means you can give, not directly to the man, but you can add somebody that, to handle the money. Okay, so the best is we purchase the requisites and the uh, and the uh, dana to you. The best, the best. Okay, the but second. But normally, uh, normally people offer the requisites which are not necessary for monks, you know. Yes. Right. <laughs> we have so many rope, you know, so many <laughs> rope. Huh? Then people want to offer the rope, right? Even now in the Katina day, we have a lot of rope, right? But we had so many. But people, if you are bringing the rope, but you bought a very expensive one, mm -hmm. then you offer to me. Not very practical, no? But not very practical. Suppose uh, people normally do not offer for the air ticket. You know? We may need to take a tour, take a, uh, take a trip, right? And also, we, we may have some other thing to do, like a poem bay, you know? <laughs> and then a poem, uh, how, how do you say, sing, how do you say, poem bay, right? We call it poem bay, like that. They forgot to offer such a wine, you know? So we may need something to use such a wine, and you can, uh, you can tell the man, Bandy, I want to offer something requisite for your requisites. And you can, you can use anything for your for your need, and tell me someone I can hand over. That will be the best. And we may have a misunderstanding that you cannot offer red packet at all. No. You can offer red packet, but not to the man directly. Understood. So we offer in a proper way. Yeah, proper way, proper way. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, do you have a question? Oh. That's a problem. <laughs> Normally in Singapore, right? Okay, you use microphone. If I visit uh, a monk in another country and it's a loan, then I want to offer, because the best I think is offer money so they can cannot, buy. Cannot. Whatever he wants. You cannot. If, if he is alone, he cannot accept it. So how, how can I do it? Because I, I still want to give the money to him. No, how can you I cannot. Because he is, the man is alone, right? Then you can ask the man, Bandy, what do you need? And whatever you need, you can buy. But if you have no time? No yeah. time, no donation. <laughs> Of course, nowadays devotee also, you know, only they offer red packet. You know, they feel very happy. You know, they feel very happy. You know, the monks cannot accept it in any form, in any form. Right? Very strict, you know. Anyway, uh, nowadays only actually less. Uh, how do you say? The member of the number of monks who accept donation are um, many, more than the monks who do not accept money, you know? Less Sorry? Less streets. You're right, less streets, less streets. So, <clears throat> okay, so. Or, or. Because I think um, if we look at if we look at Mahayana a precept, you can look at Mahayana a precept. Oh, sorry. 
eight precepts, not this one, right? But we have to look at Mahayana 10 precepts for Samanita, right? Sorry, I'm not quite sure whether uh, accepting Go and Sipa is applicable for Mahayana. I think it should be, I think. So this is the obvious one, obvious one. Mm. I thought I saw Tibetans were more accepting. So therefore, perhaps this Vinaya rules is only applicable to the Tibetans. No, even Tidavara here, look at the Mangala Vihara, right? The body of Repaka to the monks, you know, directly. Everywhere nowadays. Of course, Tidavara, some monks, so they still follow it. They still follow. Are they very strict, you know, very strict. <clears throat> Okay, then uh, silas for monks and nuns. Now let's talk about high, uh, ordain, you know, uh, higher ordained monk and nuns. In other words, we call it bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. All the rules and regulations mentioned in the Vinaya Pitakas are formulated, uh, formulated sila. We call it formula, formulated sila. Panyati Sila for monks and nuns. So the, Bo the Buddha laid down all the Vinaya rule for monks and nuns. So they are Sila under Sila. <clears throat> Vinaya Pitaka mainly contains rules and regulation of the order of monks and nuns. The order of monks and nuns. So maybe here, one thing I want to take note. Normally, you may notice that Tedavaras are not very good at uh, collecting donation, you know. When you look at Tedavara temples, they have very limited funds, very little funds, because they also maybe closely follow the Vinaya rules. Especially, they are not doing any business. And... Uh, of course, they are breaking these Vinaya rules, accepting many, but not very, I don't know, they have a kind of, um, I don't see, they know that it is not correct, you know? So, they are the, so therefore, even though they accept it, they are not, they do not popularize, huh? you know? They do not popularize. So as I, as the Buddha said in the Sota, right? Four things that define the minor monasteries, right? Monasteries, including go and seva and money, right? So if you donate a lot of money to the monks, if the monks is not using properly, then it will, how do say, create a lot of problem, you know? So therefore, you, you can see that a lot of corrupt, corrupt, corrupted monk, corrupted monk. So if they have a lot of money, then uh, they have a lot of problem. Vinaya Pitaka mainly contain rules and regulation of the oral months and nuns. Uh, not only that, details of monastic legal procedure, like how to ordain samanera, how to ordain fully ordained monk, and also how to observe Three month of rain retreat. Three month of rain retreat. We call it Vasafasa. How to perform Gatina. How to settle the disputes among the member of Sangha. So all these are mentioned in the Vinaya Pitaka. So there are 227 major rules for monks and 311 major rules for nuns. In Tiravara Bodhisin. In Tiravara Bodhisin. These are the major rules and regulations. You know? For monks, 227. For nuns, 311. In Tiravara. Mahayana, I think there are more, right? More rules and regulations. 
there are some differences between Mahayana and Theravada. Mahayana, they refrain from eating meat and fish, right? But they eat dinner. They eat dinner. Eating dinner not a problem, but eating the meat and fish problem. For Theravada, you can eat meat and fish, not allowed in the dinner. <laughs> like that, there are some differences, you know, some differences between Mayana and Tidavara. Of course, the main thing is to control the bodily and bhava action, right? Bhava action. According to Visori Mega, chapter 1, paragraph number 44, so the Buddha said that there are 91 billion <laughs> within her rules. 91 billion and 805 million, right? Million and uh, 36,000 winner rules and regulations, winner period. It is almost 92 billion. So, therefore, we always say that if you are a true, if you are a true monk, a how is it? If you, are, if you are a genuine man and nuns, you will break the winner rules. <laughs> Even including the Arahan, you know, Arahan also may break the winner rules. Of course, not with the wrong, how do you say, uh, sorry? Intention, wrong intention. Sometimes he may not know, you know? Sometimes he may not know. One time, Venerable Kachayana <clears throat> was a meeting, a meeting, a Sangha meeting. Maybe the meeting is so boring <laughs> and maybe not important. So he meditate during the meeting time. Do not listen to anybody, just do a meditation. And the other man complain. Oh, we are doing meeting, why you do not listen to us, you know? And the Buddha laid down one way near root. During the meeting, not allowed to do meditation. <laughs> <laughs> one way near root, eh? Is it one way near root? So, like that, you know, there are some other way near root that, um, how do you say, you, you may be precept. Suppose, if you are um, if you are talking to the lady on the phone, breaking with your rule. <laughs> Serious, you know. If you are not only talking as a mess, you know? suppose if I'm talking to a one lady, uh, maybe connected with the, uh, uh, I want to say, sexual, sexual activities, you know. I will be using my, my handphone, uh, maybe talking something connected with the sex. Who knows, right? Who knows? So therefore, according to Winnie's rules, if you are talking on the phone or SMS, one by one, even Gmail, you know, you may break Winnie's rules. So actually, normally, uh, the original Winnie's rule is if you are sitting with the women in the room, one by one, breaking with your rules. And if you are sitting with the women, which is very far from other people, if you are sitting alone, breaking with your rules. So there are so many people that we have to observe. Therefore, uh, of course, sometimes we uh, that honestly, sometimes we can avoid it, but normally we have to be very mindful, you know, very mindful. Therefore, when somebody wants to talk to me, that I normally sit down uh, in front of the people. Of course, talking on the phone, SMS, and Googling also may cause, uh, honestly, may break with your rules. The best thing is to let uh, the copier use our email, you know, not to use any handphone, then that will be the best. If you really want to follow the winner rules, 
So therefore, there are so many. Uh, the main purpose is um, the main, all the rules and regulations are laid down in order to control one bodily and verbal behaviors. That's main thing, right? That's main thing. And so therefore, if you are using handful, if you're using Jimmy, talking to the lady individual, normally we have to do, right? Individually. Then uh, uh, it is the breaking with your rules, breaking with your rules. One time I talked to one lady, uh, old devotee, you know. Maybe next time I may not use handful because this is a kind of breaking with your rules. <laughs> she became so sorry. <laughs> When they how can I contact you? you know? <laughs> so this is a, uh, if we want to follow actually the best, you know, if we have, a, you know, if we're using handphone, sending SMS, you know, so many things, right? It became, uh, how to say, uh, the mind became complex and dirty, right? So if we can follow Winyar rule exactly, of course, our mind will be pure. The main purpose is to control our bodily and verbal behavior. That is the purpose of winner rules. Okay? Okay, any question? That counseling is a good question, you know. Counseling is very important. We cannot do as a man normally. If we follow, if we really follow winner rules, because counseling, right, have to do individually, normally in, uh, in the room, right? Recently, when Mahayana Tambe had this problem, they have a counseling session, and a man have an affair with some ladies, some ladies. So, because they sit down individually, right? Even that, mon I, I heard that even that um, Mayana monasteries, so I think they have to, they have a certain rule, right? So they, uh, people can see from far away, I, I don't know exactly. So normally people do not want to you know, uh, show that they go to counseling session, right? They want private session. So as a monk, I think cannot do, you know, cannot do. If we are sitting somewhere that you cannot, honestly, you cannot hear to me. Suppose I'm sitting here talking with the lady quietly and Alice sitting very far, do not hear to me. <laughs> Breaking linear rules, you know? Breaking linear rules. Of course, that linear rule uh, say that if you have such, if you are breaking such linear rules, you need one clever devotee uh, to decide whether you are breaking the linear rules. If we are talking uh, something that is connected with the sex, the lady, or uh, because I cannot, you know, I cannot touch, you know, if I, you know, Ella is looking at me, definitely I cannot touch, you know, but I can still use my mouth, you know. That's like, uh, how do they break in the uh, second heaviest winner rules. And another one is the, uh, I think that is the, the fourth. Sorry, the fifth level we need rules. So clever devotee have to uh, decide whether a man is broken the winner rules or not. If the clever devotee say that you are not breaking winner rules, then no, like that. So there are so many things, so many things. You know? So therefore, I think uh, very difficult to apply, you know. <laughs> Very difficult to avoid the linear rules, you know. Anyway, uh, uh, if we know that it is not correct, if we know that that's not correct, then it is a, how do you say? 
Okay, any question? Okay, question. Yeah. Bante, for high beds, is there a height restraint? How high can the bed be? Osa sayana maha sayana. Osa me height me is not not it, it, nothing to do with the uh, how to say uh, how it height, no? It me height and luxurious, no? Luxurious one. Oh, not not the physical height. Sorry, actually, I'm I'm not quite quite very sure for that. Um, the main purpose of this op uh, precept to abstain from high and luxurious bed, high and luxurious bed. Me, uh, of course, it is osa. Suppose if you are living with so many people, you know, so many people. If your bed is so high, you know, maybe it's the osa high high bed. If you are living alone, so suppose if you are living with your family members, if you have the same height, may may not be height, you know. You consider it's hard to see. Uh, you can look at, you know, osa sena ma sena. So you have to look at the last one. Uh, high and luxurious bed, right? Great bed. If you are using very luxurious one, like a sofa, an expensive sofa, and also expensive chair, etc., it may cause your mind uh, to to feel kind of arrogant manner like that, right? So the main thing is to not, the main thing is to lead a simple life, to lead a simple life. But for how high, actually, sorry that I need to chat again, but not quite sure, that the main purpose is to lead a simple life. Simplicity, right? Simplicity. Okay, second question. I have one more question. Okay, okay. If there is a next Buddhist council, what changes would you like to have? <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing to do with, oh yeah, something to do with that. It's really many, right? <laughs> Before the Buddha passed us away, uh, the Buddha said that, the Buddha said that if the Sangha went, they can abolish some of the Vinaya rules, some of the Vinaya rules, if the Sangha went. Maybe participants of Buddhist Council, if they went, they can change it. Another thing is, um, uh, they can change small, you know, small rules and regulation. So therefore, maybe I will, ch I will something. <laughs> so many things, you know? So many things, eh? including this one. <laughs> maybe, of course, we need to try to, I want to say, discuss with the Mahayana, Vajidayana Tiravara. We can change, right? So the difference between Mahayana and Tiravara Mahayana trying to focus what the Buddha taught in. Uh, the Buddha already allowed if the Sangha went, they can change, right? They can change. Not big one, small one. Maybe the way we wear the color, maybe to standardize, you know, between Mahayana and Tidavara. Of course, it's, it may not be difficult, it, it may not be easy to discuss other linear rules. But we can stay discuss with regarding with the rope, no? Regarding with the rope. Mm. 
OK。Can a monk have credit cards? Cannot. <laughs> cannot. 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 Because credit card is a kind of money, right? Cannot have a bank account also. <laughs> bank account also. Because if you have a bank account, you will see that oh, how many, how, how many, uh, how, how much cash you can you already accumulated, you know. It creates a lot of craving, right? Craving. Of course, for me, I cannot follow these linear rules. I still accept the money. I still have a bank account. But normally, since I came to Singapore, I normally use all the money. Normally, I do not keep the money in my hand. So that is so that I do not have any. If I have so much amount of money, then. It create you know a lot of, how do you say, craving in my mind. Normally, keep away. So in that way, uh, so I do not lose the purpose of it being in bank. If I have a lot of money in my bank account, then I may change you know, I may change my idea not to be in bank or to disturb like that, right? Whatever donation I have, I normally keep away. So that would be the purpose. But if I can, if I can follow the best, lah, not to have a bank account or credit card, or not to accept it, that would be the best. Lah. But normally, normally it's very normally I I tell my uh, some of my friend. We accept money. We accept repackage. Therefore, we got less. If we do not accept money or red packet, we will get more. <laughs> Because people will donate more, right? But uh, because of craving to handle money, we cannot let go of that craving. Because of that, less donation. So therefore, when you look at uh, some men who do not accept any donation, any cash, you know, people willing to willing to do dana, right? So the best thing is not to accept any repackage or money. But the problem is, the problem is, um, <clears throat> if we do not donate repackage. The monks will not come to our monast uh, our ceremonies, right? That's a true true story. You know, true story. Suppose Mangla Vihara do not donate any red packet, just donate the rope and other requisites. Definitely, they will not come. Only a few will come, right? That's a true story. True stories. One thing we, you can do is. Uh, Uh, you cannot. You do not offer repaka to the men directly, and you ask the men. One day I want to offer requisites for your use. Then let me know you are kapia. So that will be the best. No, that will be the best. Okay. Any question? One day, just to clarify, um, if the men need to have a bank account. You still cannot give away because you have to maintain a minimum balance in the account to be active. <laughs> Otherwise, the bank will charge you service charge. You cannot give all the amount. You cannot leave zero in the bank account. Mm -mm -mm. You still have to keep some to avoid the service charge. Of course, yes, of course. I mean, what I mean is, uh, I, I just say I keep all me. Of course, I have to stay keep some. Yes. Uh, Few, yeah, few. yeah. To avoid the service charge. Mm, yes. Of course, yes, of course. It is I use the way I, you know, give all that 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 in me. I, I leave uh, zero in the bank account. So yes, this is. A, Can I ask you? Are you allowed to wear a watch? Mayana <laughs> 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 mangti wear, right? But Tirafara, we think it is a kind of ornament, a kind of a 
donning your body, right? Donning your body. So therefore, some men, they wear the expensive watch, right? So we are not wearing. And of course, uh, we're trying to maintain, maintain this uh, tradition. So therefore, uh, men and nuns, they have to train under the, uh, uh, under the, how to say, good teacher. So we have to look at the way they behave. If we are wearing the watch right now, suppose I wear the watch, then my, my friends, they see me, and my teacher, they see me, they will scold me, you know. <laughs> Definitely they will scold me. <laughs> it is not appropriate. It is a kind of uh, adorning our body, right? So therefore, when you look at a man, as I earlier said that, simplicity, right? We don't have anything in our body, only the rope, right? If you look at any religious leaders, not only Buddhist monks and nuns, but also religious leaders in other religions, look at their body. If you see a lot of ornaments, a lot of objects in their body, they are not, uh, how do you say, they must be hidden, hidden, you know, in other words, rice and ritual. It's connected with the rice and ritual, right? So therefore, uh, when you look at the Buddha, the Buddha have only three rope, three rope. One rope, we call it upper rope. Another one is lower rope, lower rope. Another one is tepe, we call it tepe rope. So. Tabaromi uh, is a combined two clothes so that we can use as a blanket. When the weather is very cold, we can use it. Only three, you know. The Bodhas and most of the men at the time of the Bodha, they wear only three rope. Not three set, you know. Not three set. So it is one practice wearing the three rope, it is one of the practices the Buddha, the Buddha prays. Of course, it is not a winner rule. <clears throat> it's not a winner rule. If you, have, if you have a devotee to offer, you can accept. You can accept it. But uh, even nowadays, some of the monks, they wear only three rope. What to do when they are taking a shower? What to do? Normally, when you look at the soda, you will see that the Bodhas take a shower in, in the river with the lower rope, lower rope, lower rope. And the Bodha came, uh, the Bodha, how do you say it? Come out from the river, stand under this hot sand, drying his under rope, under the hot sand. Only it is dry, the Bodha will go. When you look at the soda, you will see, right? Drying his rope, right? So therefore, what I want to say is, when you look at the Buddha and disciples, and also simple monks, they do not wear anything in their body. So the rope, that's all, you know? The rope is to cover your body, that's all, you know? We have a one, uh, one monk from Czech Republic. Uh, normally, uh, he ordained as a Samanita in Sri Lanka, and he went to Myanmar to ordain as a monk. And he speak out importance of the Winyar rules, Winyar rules, including not to handle the money, not to accept the money. And a few years ago, he went back to his country. Uh, it's a winter, winter time, you know, very cold, cold, cold season. Normally, he do not wear the slipper. Normally, wherever he go, he will go barefoot. When he go back to Czech Republic, no wear the slipper, and he he bring only three three rope. 
And he said that, of course, the Buddha test, the Buddha himself test, whether three rope is enough for in the winter, in the uh, cold season. So therefore, the Buddha allowed tapir rope, right? Tapir rope. So that man went to uh, Czech Republic, Europe, Europe, and with the three rope, with three rope, <laughs> without wearing the slipper. You know? Of course, many people look at him, you know? and many people come and ask him, and he answer. So in that way, uh, he got, you know, some follower from Europe <laughs> because of Winyaru, you know, because of Winyaru. So what I want to say is a simplicity, you know. It's very important. If, when you look at a monk, whether he is simple or not, so we can decide, you know, we can decide. Okay. Um, if you still have a question, one more question if you want. Okay. What about monks traveling to Zuri cars? No, I said. <laughs> monks. Uh, maybe let me add this one. Uh, Mangs are uh, traveling with the Lazuria car. Lazuria car. Okay, okay. If fetch by the Libya, okay. Mm, okay. The one thing is, one thing is, uh, the Buddha said that in Jivaka Soda, Majamanika Soda number 55, that the body offer a mank for lunch to his house, and they prepare lazuri, I want to say, some chewy meat, you know, expensive and very good meat. If the devotee invite, the man can eat it, eat it. But do not have any desire, or uh, the meat is very, uh, the food is very good. If the devotee offer me again, Wow, that would be better. <laughs> we shouldn't have such thinking. We shouldn't have such thinking. We can eat good food, and also we can use, uh, we can ride luxury car, but we shouldn't have it. We shouldn't uh, have it, such a desire to enjoy it. Okay, mm -hmm. the last question. The monk wear a hat. Sorry? Can the monk wear a hat? Oh, hat, right? Yep. Uh, in the Winyar rules, in the Winyar rules, we have a one Winyar rules. Um, when we are going outside of the monasteries, we cannot do like this. We cannot do like this. You're breaking with your rules, you know, breaking with your rules. You can use umbrellas. So that means even like this, it's not allowed, right? In the temple, okay. Huh? In the temple, okay. When you go outside of your temple, if you are doing like this, huh? it's a breaking with your rules, you know? And then those who will be ordained as a samanita, you have to learn that. You have to learn that. So that means, if you look at that one, uh, you are not allowed to use uh, like a, how, how you say, cap, cap. And so, I think you may observe, right? Most of the Tiravara monks, they are not using any cap. And of course, some Mahayana and, and Tibetan monks, they don't mind, they don't mind. Even uh, Dalai Lama, right? He wear, wear the cap. So therefore, uh, in the Tiravara Winya rules, uh, and they're not allowed. <clears throat> Even in Myanmar, we have a, a very big discussion. Uh, 18th century, there is a very, di a very big dispute whether the man can wear the cap on their head. And uh, later, uh, there is a, how do you say, uh, the committee to decide. 
So the monks are not allowed to wear the cap. So from the time on, no monks is not uh, no monk is allowed. So if you see a monk wearing the cap on their head, then people at the body will see, wow, this man is not a good man, you know, like that. Okay, you can use umbrella, you know, you can use umbrella for that. So therefore, <clears throat> uh, some of the linear rules have to look at our seniors and the way they behave, then we have to practice. Automatically we know, oh, this is not correct, right? It's not correct. Can can can. Okay, any, any age, no age limit, but minimum is a must be twenty. If you are above twenty, then you can ordain as a monks and nuns. So there's no age limit in uh, Tita Bar. Okay, so thank you, and uh, we study next week. Uh, next week will be the last uh, lesson for the seal. Yo vara tam bava ro manu chesu sakya muni pagava katta kecho para kato bala vidya samangi Tan su ka tan sa ra na tha mu pe mi ra ka vi ra ka ma nin cha ma so kan tan ma ma san ka tha ma pa ti ku lan Madura mi mampa guna suvi patan dhamma mi mansara natamupe mi yathachadena mahapalamahu Chattu su su si su puri sa yuge su Atacha bhogaladamma dasate Sang mi mansara natamu pe mi Satu, satu, satu